We are stronger by being part of a team which together speaks with authority on the subject of public health and can warn government with authority about the trips and falls ahead if they go the wrong way and can guide the government to the right outcomes that will make for a stronger public health service and therefore a healthier public with fewer health inequalities. We do make that case very strongly about the link, as Marmot does, between poverty and ill health and why we think it's so important that deprivation uh, has got to be an important factor on resourcing the new public health service and funding the services that people get. And just a little kind of footnote to people to watch out for is that a little bit of the funding is going to be something called a health premium, which the government intends to incentivise the right kind of behaviour. And I just want people to be careful about how the measures are done of incentivising uh, and that we don't get areas of the country with huge levels of deprivation being passed over for the incentive because they didn't achieve particular targets that the government set for everybody when the targets themselves were blind to the fact that their challenges are stronger because of the levels of deprivation in their communities. So I wanted to reassure people that uh, we're on track. That's a very kind of people. <laughs> the old politics of the NHS has meant more about the physical building of hospitals and it often became more important than the services actually provided. The goal today, it's about actually not building more hospitals but keeping people out of hospital. It means that what goes on outside the NHS is now as important as what goes on within it actually and that's why the work that you do is so important. We need to do all we can to prevent illness and reduce our reliance on the NHS. We do need to build up the evidence, the objective proof of why investing in the environment matters and what sort of measures work best. And yes, we need to make sure your voice is heard across Whitehall. And that's why we've got a sub cabinet subcommittee on public health, a ministerial group bringing together government departments to hold together national action on health improvement. And as I say, it is a bit of a cliche talking about partnership working, but that cabinet, cabinet subcommittee is absolutely vital and has got real buy-in from all my fellow ministers. And I'm not going to gloss over the obvious, these are difficult times, difficult for many of you I know in a very personal capacity as well, um, change makes the ground move beneath our feet. Um, and I'm sorry for that, and I'm extremely grateful for the incredible professionalism that I have seen um, when I've met environmental health officers around the, around the place. Change is unsettling, but change means that we can do things better. I was born an optimist, but I do think actually that in everything there are opportunities. And as somebody once said to me, you know, sacred cows make the best burgers. So, <laughs> my message is one still of hope and optimism, opening up possibilities and potential for environmental health practitioners, seeing the improvements that we all want to see. Environmental health has a long and distinguished past, and I want to see it have a long and distinguished future. Is I need you to um, take the field. The field's been opened up. A reinforced budget for public health. What I need you to do is to use your influence, to use the power that you have, and remember in life that nobody ever gives you power. You have to take power. Get on the field, use your skills, use your professionalism to inspire, lead, and enthuse, and we will see the public health improve in the way that we all want to. Thank you very much.